Hello and welcome from the First United Methodist Church in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, both from me and from this crabapple tree. It's one of two crabapples that we planted about three years ago in memory of Mary Crabtree. And uh, since then, we've been using the day that's designated on the church calendar as the Festival of God's Creation to do some tree planting. It coincides on the secular calendar with the day after Earth Day. And, well, the weekend. It's somewhere in the, the neighborhood of Earth Day, put it that way. And um, this tree is actually growing very well. And so is its partner tree just to my right. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. And last year we put in a couple of pear trees. To this weekend, we're going to be adding two more pear trees, Bartlett pears. Bradford pears are ornamental and they are an invasive species. Bradford pears, they're the kind that are fruit bearing and that the animals absolutely love, which is why we didn't get many pears from them last year and probably won't in years to come, but the animals deserve to eat too, wouldn't you say? Um, now the ants, that was a bigger problem, but uh, we'll deal with them when the time comes. Anyway, this year we're going to be putting in two more pear trees, a pair of pears. And since we had two last year, we now have a pair of pear of pears a pair of pairs of pear. Um, we're going to have four trees and we'll see how it goes next year. But it's one of the things that we're doing to try to take care of the environment and to try to take care of our community at the same time. In a few years, not right away, but in a few years, we'll have enough fruit to share and uh, we'll be able to do that and it will be a great thing. Simply to be able to work with the earth that we walk over and provide not only for ourselves, but for our neighbors. Or maybe I should say, recognize God's provision for all of us. And that is part of our worship today. Let's pay attention to some of the rest. Before the trees get planted on Sunday, preparation has to go into things. The holes in the ground have been dug, but not only have the holes been dug, the ground has been prepared a little bit. It's been loosened up, it's been mixed up, a little bit of uh, fertilizer has been put into it ahead of time. And uh, for any crop, it helps if the soil is ready. Another parable that Jesus told has to do with that. Sometimes it's called the parable of the sower. You might as well also call it the parable of the soil. And it says this. Listen. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, 
and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they didn't have much soil. And they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Jesus talked not only about soil, but about trees and plants and birds, all sorts of things that are part of nature. Actually, nature is bigger than we are. There's a lot more to it than there is to what we think of as the human realm. But he brought the two together. And when he was telling us about what people can be like, he used one time the example of trees. He said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you'll know them by their fruits. When Jesus talked about the trees getting tossed into the fire or the grass getting tossed into the fire, he may have been thinking about some sort of scrub pile like this, some sort of place where you pile up the brush and the weeds and the things that you really just don't want elsewhere because they get in the way of other things. And it wasn't just big things, but sometimes it could be small things that turn big out in the fields. One of the things he said was this, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to somebody who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the household came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them, that both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus said this, I tell you, do not worry about your life or what you will eat or what you'll drink or about your body and what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. There are some plants that look good when they're small, but sometimes they get really out of hand. This time I'm thinking for Scythia. It's beautiful stuff, but every summer I end up having to chop it back and chop it back before it overruns the parking lot and the area behind it. And that is what Forsythia is. But sometimes it can be a good thing if 
a plant gets much larger, much, much, much larger than you would expect. And Jesus had this to say about what faith is like. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Lord, let us never fail to learn from your creation. And let us never forget that we are part of your creation. Lord, we give you thanks for the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love that from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. <laughs> 